Hello, I'm Michelle McMullen, a Crow researcher from North Carolina State University. Welcome to our discussion of how iterative persona development can support inclusive research and assessment. Our project builds on our presentation last year at SIGDOC. It's part of a larger, ongoing project with the Corpus and Repository of Writing. If you'd like to see more about our research and all that Crow offers, please visit our website. Distributed academic work is carried out by many individuals across multiple sites and among multiple disciplines. Today, we're going to talk about how to make distributed academic work more constructive. Our presentation builds from the assumption that how we work is just as important as what we make. Our approach to managing distributed work at Crow is called Constructive Distributed Work, or CDW. With CDW, we take a three-dimensional approach to project management, with core principles that underpin our work, documented best practices that define how we work, and orientations to work that help us balance attention to underlying methods, day-to-day -day activity, and the outcomes of work. At Crow, we are motivated by a need to create inclusive, ethical, reciprocal spaces. Constructive distributed work guides our ongoing iterative research to create those spaces. Our long-term goal is to help other research teams do the same. We are developing methods for inclusive, iterative self-assessment. The goal is to be effective and ethical. One research method we have found particularly useful is the development of personas. As this work is still developing, we think that sharing our methods, both internally and externally, can engage more people. More people means better feedback, which will help us to refine those methods. In this presentation, we describe the value of methodological work for research teams. We then outline our iterative persona building process and discuss the value of these methods. Finally, we highlight the role of iteration in these methods. Our goal is to help other teams find ways to adapt our methods for their contexts. As we are also continually assessing our own work, we invite feedback and discussion about these methods. We've created a feedback form on writecrow.org and we'd love to hear from you. I'm Hadi Banat from UMass Boston. Methodological work can drive the goal of attending to social justice through technical communication. When considering our methods, particularity of context supports addressing culture, race, gender, privilege, and so forth. As demonstrated by both recent work in TPC and important methodological scholarship. Our methods draw from software development, user experience design, and TPC research that highlights how engaging methodology can drive reflection and action. Identifying tacit knowledge can be difficult, but it is an essential part of this process. We use interviews for this work. That said, if the process of gathering tacit knowledge is not carefully documented and context is elided, representation suffers. To counter, we follow Moore and Elliot in building a listening infrastructure to gather and document tacit knowledge. Design thinking can also provide an iterative, user-centered approach for this work, but only if we introduce it to our team carefully and shape infrastructure accordingly. Using iterative methods can be challenging. Writing processes are often linear, and teamwork can be constrained by the short length of courses and internships. Recent work from Atherton and Badova suggests that unblack boxing can provide a framework for purposefully maintaining iteration and design processes by refiguring its seeming messiness as valuable and productive. We should remember that attention to methodology, especially in qualitative research, has long insisted on the need to be comfortable with messiness. In the end, carefully attending to methodology can make assessment more iterative and inclusive, as long as we don't compromise the goals we have outlined. We need to foreground balancing institutional, team, and individual goals. So one way to make sure we foreground individuals and teams is by developing personas. Our sources for building personas are well known. Personas are relatively easy to develop and appeal broadly. Data-driven personas can be an effective development and assessment tool. In our experience report for SIGDOG last year, 
We showed how developing personas helps us shape grant writing for Crow. Adapting Quesenberry's model helped us focus on the six areas of data collection shown here. Coding this data was highly collaborative and iterative, that including developing summaries and identifying details that would ground personas in the experience of our team members. Here are the six categories that emerged as we coded data. They are personal characteristics, goals and tasks, motivations, attitudes and needs, stories and quotations. Using the information we coded from each participant, we worked collaboratively to develop personas that would help us to highlight successes and address potential gaps related to how we implement the constructive distributed work framework moving forward. We developed personas for undergraduate and graduate researchers. For this article, we added an example of a persona we developed for early career faculty. Hi, I'm Bradley Dolger from Purdue. Our previous study focused on grant writing because it's an activity that engages most of Crow's team at some point in the writing process, and grant writing is a key part of the Crow project. As we move forward with our research, we are widening our scope to better assess constructive distributed work across all Crow tasks. We focus on three research questions for the next stage of our work. First, how can we assess our constructive distributed work framework within Crow? Second, what influences the internal implementation of CDW? Third, what affordances help us address complications and iterate? Our research has two stages, gathering data from Crow documentation, then conducting interviews with Crow team members to learn more about trends the documentation suggests. In both stages, participants actively review the data we're gathering and shape the research through member checks. To gather contextual data, we analyze conversations on Basecamp and comments made in documents such as Google Docs. Looking at these group conversations can help us identify the tacit knowledge that informs the Crow team in preparation for discussing that knowledge with participants in interviews. Obviously, teamwork involves a lot of interpersonal communication. While technically open to all Crow team members on our platforms, these conversations are not public. So, in addition to working only with team members who give informed consent, we have two member checks during data collection. We give participants control over the data we gather for analysis, then ask them to review the ways we've coded data before we build personas. Moving to the second stage involves interviews that are retrospective reflection. Interviewers and participant Crow researchers reconstruct past collaborations. Questions investigate outcomes for the Crow team, individuals own professional development, and ask participants to use our framework to analyze past interactions. We will use the data we gather to build on previous work by iteratively creating personas for different roles within Crow. This will help us identify needed changes and new goals within our CDW framework. Working with participants across the Crow team will help us understand how collaboration is or is not afforded by the infrastructure we've built. This careful, iterative reflection can illuminate gaps and barriers in this infrastructure and in turn, feed conversations about ways to consider and rectify these gaps and barriers. Hello, I'm Shelton Weech from Purdue. We think making personas a methodological tool has six benefits. Using iteratively developed personas improves research across our team by encouraging self-analysis and reflection. This is true across every stage of research, design, data collection and analysis, and sharing findings. Developing personas helps identify gaps in the implementation of constructive distributed work. For example, they helped us recognize the need to modify how we introduce undergraduates to our unique approach to collaborative grant writing. Personas help build infrastructure. They ensure that new researchers are comfortable sharing feedback with more experienced researchers and team leaders, thus helping them feel valuable to the team. Assessing our methods helped us identify opportunities to share tools and evaluate assignments across our team in a manner that balances individual and team benefits. This, in turn, helps us evaluate the intellectual and disciplinary diversity of our team. 
Iterative assessment includes evaluating the digital tools critical for distributed work. These tools are not neutral, and we must continually ask if the tools we're using are right for our team, short and long term. Finally, we think our coding scheme and approach to iteration have value outside of Crow, and we know that hearing from other teams will, in turn, help us expand our work to other important areas of writing research. Thanks for listening. We hope you read the whole report in the SIGDOC proceedings. You can send us questions and feedback through writecrow.org, where you'll also find a lot more about constructive distributed work and Crow.